Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. Uh, My very welcome. first question is, um, what's your story? So what was it like growing up? Mm. Okay, um, for myself, um, my what our, our story is mainly we used to run our own marketing agency. Okay. Okay. So okay. Uh, our background was very much uh, marketing, nothing okay. to do with uh, social, nothing yeah. to do with alteration of fashion. Okay. Right? Uh, growing up years was always very independent because okay. uh, uh, I. I grew up in a three-room flat. You know, okay. uh, we I've, I've I've learned how to be independent. Even in um, to go into the university, um, I actually took a break from school after A levels. Okay. Took two uh, two years of flying, earned enough money, um, got myself to university. Okay. And soon after university, um, after working for for two years, started my own marketing agency with my then boyfriend, now husband. Uh, so I've always been very very independent and been very fortunate. I think our, our life, yes, we've worked very very hard, with, uh, but at the same time it has been very smooth. Yeah. So after running our agency for about six years, our marketing agency was acquired by a multinational. Okay. Uh, so from in a sense from a very average your uh, um, your. Um, uh, life, you, you, yeah. yeah. We, we suddenly became pretty comfortable. We could even, uh, my husband and I could even retire when we hit you know, our early thirties. So I, I think having that that fortunate life, you know, to be able to take a break just for six years, I, I, I felt very, very fortunate, and I wanted to give back to society. Okay. That was really the motivating factor of starting a social enterprise. Okay. Uh, but of course, at that time, uh, that was in 2009, uh, we, weren't, we, we, we weren't really familiar with you know, any, like I said, I didn't come from a social service sector, I didn't do volunteer work and all. I didn't really know how to give back. Okay. And uh, that was the time uh, NUS launched their Social Entrepreneurship and Philanthropy Center. And I attended a talk and, it was, and that was when we were first introduced to the term social enterprise. And we felt that social enterprise would have been great for us because uh, with our business skills, we can create something that is continually sustainable to help the community. So, so we said, okay, social enterprise is how we want to give back to society. Uh, then next, obviously, come uh, to identify the business concept as well as the group that we wanted to help. Uh, business concept-wise, we felt that there was a commercial gap for high-quality alteration. Because if you look at the market in, in Singapore or in Asia, uh, we do not, uh, alteration has always been hole in the wall, very messy, very, you know, uh, you, you go in, you, you, people, they will start looking for your things like everywhere, you know, and, and, oh, yes. and yeah, yeah. Every time I go to the yes. yes, and, and then there's threats. So it's basically a very messy, um, you know, uh, concept. It's not modern, it's, 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 and if, if you have something very expensive, you're very afraid that they might damage it. So you don't have peace of mind, but yet you are. You need to do alteration. Yeah. So I think a lot of people, because of their experience, sometimes are very afraid to buy clothes mm -hmm. because they're not sure whether it can be altered or it will be altered properly. Mm -hmm. So we felt that that is definitely a commercial need, uh, a very good commercial gap that, that we could fill in the market. Next is the people we wanted to help. We started uh, with talking to people in the social service sector and they, they said actually single mothers could be one uh, sector that we could help because single mothers need a flexibility of time. Uh, they need to have a skill, obviously anybody would need to have a skill to fall back on that ideally even if they can work from home is even better. So I thought okay sewing and, and your single mothers will be great because if they have a, a sewing skill or even if they have current sewing skill and we can upgrade them better, they, will have, you know, they can make a decent living for themselves and having that flexibility and all that. So we said, okay, let's, 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 let's launch, uh, at that time we call it Alteration Initiative, and so that we can help you know, single mothers as well as we can fill a commercial gap. Uh, so that, that was when the you know, Alteration Initiative was born. Okay, and that's the story. So how do you, um, whom do you pick and who are these women that you um, take into Alteration Initiative? Okay, uh, initially when we started, we worked very closely with voluntary welfare organizations and government agencies. So we worked with uh, CDAC, CDC, uh, NTUCWDS group, uh, HELP, which stands for Help for Every Lone Parent, 
uh, PPIS or Salam. So we basically approach government agencies and VWOs and ask them whether they have beneficiaries that would like to have an opportunity to learn or upgrade themselves and make a good living for themselves. So we conducted what we call work trials. They come in, they get interviewed, and then they, they, they from there they, they um, get to do better and better. Besides that, after we started, <coughs> we realised that um, fortunately for us, a lot of media got interested in our story. So we had quite a lot of media publicity. Uh, the very first one was Straits Time, even CNN caught our story. So literally we were attracted international media to feature us. And with all this feature, um, women who, who feel that they need that opportunity do, did approach us directly as well. And uh, then we started actually expanding the people that we uh, help because besides single mothers, there are a lot of disadvantaged women as well. So now currently our beneficiary group include uh, mature women. Uh, more than 50% of our staff are 50 years old and above. A lot of them are uh, formal out of work women. For whatever reasons, they couldn't uh, go back to work, especially uh, a lot of them are because yeah, their kids growing years. They were stuck at home, they could not work, so they could have stopped working for 10 years, 20 years, or, or you know, doing little things at home. So with, with, with this opportunity, uh, uh, it, it gives them a chance to integrate back to society. So that's that's where we, we actually like said expanded the people that we, 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 we are helping today. Okay, mm. I understand. And um, so you give them a form of training. Um, mm. Is that it? So yeah. once they join, it is just. Um, this is where I want. I have mm. more questions about what you do at Alteration. Okay. So do you make your own clothes or do you only help Alteration? Alteration. We, we, our, our stress is, okay, our social mission is to provide training and employment opportunities to women in need. That is our social mission. And our business mission is to provide high quality alteration services. Okay, and we stress a lot of fine alteration. So, so um, a lot of the ladies who join us, in fact, uh, when they first come in, it's actually a very huge culture shock for them, with or without skill. Okay, even with skill, they find that we're very particular about workmanship. So every little thing that's wrong, from the thread colour to the, the, the straightness of the line to the inside finishing and the outside finishing, it has to be really gorgeous. So that is, that is something we're very, very particular about. Okay. And then um, besides workmanship that has to be fine, they also have to be uh, very used to our processes. So you imagine someone who hasn't been working or working in a very you know, uh, uh, back-end kind of uh, environment, a lot, it becomes a very huge culture shock for them where they, they, they need to know like, okay, um, this is a certain steps that you have to follow. Uh, when in doubt, always ask, always, you know. You know so, so it's really um, getting them to become um, no problem solvers actually. Anything, they will stop, they will discuss, and then they will do. <clears throat> so I, I, I think um, uh, the great thing about, I feel, our, our organization has, has, has done for, for um, uh, a lot of the ladies who, who join us and want to learn is that besides the skill that we impart to, to help them uh, grow and up, up, up skill, we also help them to think a little further. That means whatever jobs you just don't blindly sew or you blindly do things, yeah. you, know, you, yeah. you actually do put in the extra effort, the value, the care. We always say it's really the heart that we have. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's 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 what we do with the ladies. Okay. Mm. Is that so? I work with in a manager role too. Yes. I work with very. Uh, I work with a young team, in fact. So I have 16, 17 year olds who you know are working in a retail environment. Yes. And often I I really wonder. So how do I motivate them, or how do I, how do I? So I have this. So the company has a culture in mind. Right. The ideal state that we yes. want to reach. Okay. And then there's the state, uh, the, the state where they are used to or what they used to in other work environment. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's always a fight to get them to reach the ideal state. Right. So are there any tricks that you use to sort of um, make sure that your culture stays at this level and that you're able to lift everyone up there? I, I, I feel one of them. Um, it's, it's a huge learning process for me as well. Uh, from learning, uh, from managing an advertising agency where everyone's a, a executive level who are your um, who would do the extra in a sense to to suddenly working with a team who are, who never had most of them don't have education most of them wouldn't even pass primary school yes yeah, uh, and and they, they've been all their life in, in a very different kind of environment as us you know so so I think I think I, I find that um, the the way 
uh, I need to work with that is very different. And and I think I myself have have changed a lot in this whole process. For one, uh, I put in a lot more heart than that because leading by example is actually the most important. Everything that um, your day one, I will put in the extra uh, extra effort to think through. So even a simple thing like they. Um, they find that their work environment, um, in, in, I say not enough lights. I, I still remember that is the, the, the biggest thing that we, we, we did for them. When we first went in, we always think of the ambience, the mood, yeah. the, 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 yeah. because the customer experience coming from an ad agency, yeah. the look and everything, it's very important. So we look at ambience and then we, we in, in the work area also, we thought ambience was important. So we spend money in doing very gorgeous uh, cabinets, you know, the laminates we choose are nice and everything. Yeah and uh, the lighting's nice and everything and, and they went in they said why is it so dark why is the the, 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 the cabinets all black <laughs> you know, uh, so and, and basic thing like yeah that. correct yeah so so to them it's like for alteration or for sewers the brightness of the place is very important even though we paid close to three times the price to do everything yeah. gorgeous it actually worked against uh, the, 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 in a sense the, the environment of this the working environment of the staff yeah. so I think a lot of things we, 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 we suddenly have to put ourselves in their shoes to think yes you know, although you pay a lot more but that, that might not be what they want you know some, so sometimes the simplest thing is important to them yeah so I, I, I think that's that's really for one I said leading my example thinking of what the staff really needs and helping them um, do their job better okay so so I think that's that's really uh, being more considerate. So so we, we, we implement a lot of things and we, we, right from the management all the way bottom. So whatever they want, like I said, the management becomes very, very considerate and very sensitive to their needs. And hoping that with that they in turn can be more considerate as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leading by example. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um so my next question is is a little bit away from the alteration issue. So as a woman mm. doing all this, yeah. have you ever felt that um, this is, this job is a little bit tougher? Mm. If I was a man, then mm. this would be easier to do? Or have you ever been in those places? No, not at all. I think as a woman, to me, it's an advantage okay. for me. Okay. Uh, this is a woman initiative as a really by women for women. It's really about empowering of women. And I think in, in alteration, especially in alteration, being a woman works even better because you can handle the ladies and the male customers a lot better. As compared to if it's a male, you, you, you actually handling the ladies' customer might be a little harder because for one, you can't touch the ladies. Yes. Yeah, so, so to me, actually, that's a plus factor. Even in the agency days, I feel that it is a plus factor because handling the guys, if you are good and uh, you can do things well, but because you are a lady, they give you a little bit more face, so you can actually get your uh, to to me uh, a, a little bit uh, a easier way to to work, especially if you are young younger, not too young. If you are too young, you still have to prove yourself that you are good enough. But I, I find that being uh, a lady is is not really a disadvantage. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's good to know. <laughs> uh, how is uh, a typical job of being made? So what do you do? Um, when you wake up, are there any sort of routines that you have to stick to? Oh yes, because it's a it's a very very full day for, for me. Um, I we have three locations, the, the workshop and two retail outlets. So every morning uh, before eight, I will reach the circular road workshop because I'll need to take the Mandarin stuff to to pass it to my workshop manager, and there she will then run through with me any things that she needs to clarify by night. 9 plus, I will leave the workshop and go to the Lucky Plaza outlet. So the Lucky Plaza outlet, again, uh, the manager there will run through anything she needs to run with me, run through with me, and after which, by 11, I will reach the Mandarin Gallery outlet and I'll stay there till 8pm. So that's my typical day. So it's